so. Okay, we're on. All right. It is 5.31, Wednesday, September 21st. Uh, I'd like to call the Finance and Budget Committee meeting to order. Uh, first item on the agenda is the facilities planned vendor recommendation. Um, from Angela and Chris. So would either of you want to weigh in on that first? Yeah, um, you know, and I'll say a little couple things and I'll turn it over to Chris, but uh, you know, just we're, we're ready to make a recommendation to engage with a contractor for a facility survey. Uh, you know, the idea in mind for this would be that we would engage with this person or with, with this vendor with Nexus Solutions and uh, they would you know take the time to do a thorough facility survey and we would use that that information for many years to come. We really like them. Uh, from my standpoint, they offer a lot of uh, assistance if we go to a future referendum uh, and just just assistance overall and they look at our our district from an enrollment standpoint, like our buildings, they would just be really full and comprehensive. And they bring with them a, a lot of experience working with other larger districts. And they also help and advise on the financial pieces as well and have those dashboards, which are really, really nice to see. So uh, I'm gonna turn it over to Chris so he can add his comments. <laughs> oh, did I say, uh, well, did I mix up the name before? No, 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 no. I, I uh, you. Very well said. Um, I, I've got experience with other B and G guys throughout the state. Talked to some of those folks who have that, that use Nexus. Uh, we got some in our own backyard. Uh, Luxembourg Casco did their big gym area and wrestling area for their uh, plus and lots of other things. So um, their experience, uh, I think, is is this is what they do, uh, and they do it very well. Um, and they have a good track record with bringing the board lots of information for you guys to decipher. I, uh, I asked Nexus to give, paint me a picture of what it looks like when you, after you do the facility study. They said, well, we typically go line by line and we meet on a Saturday, breakfast, lunch, and dinner if it takes that going through every single recommendation, every single thing that they've identified. So you guys are up to your eyeballs and all of this <laughs> information about everything, what the principals think about that building, this building, all of the different things. So you can say, okay, here's all the stuff they've figured out. Where do we want to go from here? Um, and then you get to drive and you get to say, this is important. We want to do this athletic area we want to do this instructional area we want to do these boilers you know so they they bring you along and and they pr provide you all the information for you guys to figure out what direction you want to go and then they 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 canvass the city and their voters to find out what they're willing to support and you know they they do that lock stock and barrel have you guys been in either of you been in contact with uh, Nexus since our proposal uh, that they provided us? I, I asked him, what is it after you provide all this information and you say you, you meet with the board and what does that look like? So they said, you know, typically because it's very, it's typically a lot of information. They don't do it in an evening. Mm -hmm. They take usually a, a Saturday or a, some sort of day where you can spend the time to go through, immerse yourself in it. So that was my question to them. I also asked CISA 10, can you give me some examples of districts that are our size that you've done? They answered the question, we've done the smallest district in the state. Uh, can't remember what the name of it is. Yeah. And, and they've also done the largest in the state as well. Um, and I that sort of concerned me a little bit because I didn't, you know, I think Portage would be something that would be similar but smaller to us. Sure. Whereas some of the other clients that Nexus had were right in our wheelhouse with Stevens Point, you know, Wausau, uh, Wisconsin Rapids. You know, those those sizes that are close to us, I thought were 
something that I thought the, the board should know. Okay, so yeah. that's good insight. Yeah. Um, and then Angela, I guess, uh, is there any reason that you're um, recommending Nexus over CISA? Uh, definitely the, the commissioning aspect, you know, along with the other factors that Chris had mentioned uh, is, is very, is critical. And that was um, also, I mentioned a little bit of that in the memo. When we come to having a large projects going on, there is so much with daily operations in the district that to have, you know, a, you know, a, a vendor like Nexus to be able to commission and check that things are working properly is critical. Uh, when I was in, in Valders, just for an example, we had a, a referendum project that uh, with the, with HVAC and the heating and cooling wasn't working correct. And we ended up having to, you know, the superintendent had to do a lot of the back and forth with the buildings and grounds person and to try to get the vendors to try to rectify the issues and we had a whole payment and, you know, and, and we wouldn't have to worry about that. You know, we're large enough of, as a district that you know, we want someone that can help come in and manage these projects and ensure that they're done well. And, and we feel, um, you know, while CISA 10 could offer that, it was kind of like an additional charge and additional services. I think that's what Chris was able to find where, where Nexus, that is just always a standard item that's included. And I think that really speaks to the fact that they work with larger districts and um, is definitely a reason that helps them rise to the top in my eyes. We don't we don't pay them if they don't if we don't win the referendum too right that's correct they'll, they'll mm -hmm. work what they'll the, what they do i've asked them you know because i'll be honest i didn't i thought it was more of a marketing ploy when they said they had 100 percent success rate yeah and my feedback to them was you know guys say you should break it down to how many pass on the first attempt second attempt third attempt and you can say we, we did 100% after one district had took three tries. I think boards would appreciate that you don't give up on it and, and that you, you're there. That would, that would, I think, be more accurate and it wouldn't sound so slick, to be honest. So, um, but what I do like about what, what they do is that they, they will learn from the lessons of the failed referendum talk to the talk to our voters and, and get some feedback so then we can say okay this is what we learned in hindsight of why it didn't pass and now we're going to make adjustments and you guys are driving those adjustments um, so you're in control of everything and they're telling they're they're an extension of my department I feel I truly feel and they plus they prove that with the with the Dectron unit at the high school that Tektron unit came to us broken. And, you know, the, the wiring was, was inadequate. I didn't have to pick up one phone to talk to the people out in New York. Uh, they were hounding them, saying, hey, they had technicians flying in from New York to fix this and figure out what's going on. And our swim team only lost two days of practice in August when, I mean, they were they were there bird dogging it down and making sure that the, the people that we hired were accountable for service and commissioning and all that other stuff. So I, I, I really truly am uh, wowed by what they do and that they're, they, they get paid for it, of course, but we're, they're also doing a lot of uh, good service for us so that it's going to work when it's, when it's turned over to us. Does anybody have any other uh, questions or um Tony? Yeah, um, Chris, did we find out what the, is there like a minimum engagement with them? You know, um, I, that I didn't, yeah, uh, I didn't ask, I can share with you back in 2017 when they were here and they they just did a, a, a review of our, I asked them to look at our buildings with regard to um, boilers and the survey that they do, and this was um, submitted September 19th, 2017. That was the first time they were in our district. I asked them to do, give us some idea of the services. At that time that they said um, that if we don't, if we don't do work with them, that that survey was gonna cost $50,000. So I would I have to imagine now that that would be 
more plus if they're looking at more than just boilers that 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 cost would be more than that so I, I know. you're saying that you could probably infer from what was stated in that instance that if we do one project we're not you know on the hook for that survey right is what right yeah okay. yeah yeah it, 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 it's, it's in their best interest to try to learn everything they can so when we do launch they don't have to send their engineers back to do a bunch of calculations sure there'll be some more of site visits and some calculations but they already have a pretty decent idea of the btus required to heat the building or whatever aspects they're looking at or whatever project we're looking at it might be windows at lincoln high school and the two middle schools and they would already have a pretty good idea of how many windows are there and 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 so they they have a lot of time vested in a, a in a report that's very detailed and this is you know when we did the roof survey for example you know i don't remember my official answers i don't remember exactly what the cost was for that roof survey but it was probably along the lines of thirty thousand dollars and we have a million square feet of roofs so they took cores of the roof to verify what they think the roof is made of, gave us a condition of that roof, sized it, gave it an evaluation, and then a number to replace and repair. And, and that, that information is very, very helpful for us to look at. What is our longest, what is our roof that needs to be done first? The red ones, there's only three on this page, are the ones that are the worst. So th this information is very good to, as a roadmap to be able to say, how are we doing at this building? Well, this building's pretty good. It's got a score of 95. This one's got a score of 75, it's yellow. And the red one is a score of 33. Oh. And the 33 is gonna cost $601,000, uh, you know, $602,000. That one happens to be Jefferson. So at a glance, it's really nice to have some of this documentation. Yeah. Uh, so, so their uh, cost would be, let's use the example that you did. We, if we were moving to replace that roof, we received by chance we went out for a referendum mm -hmm. to have money. Uh, so their, their work would include bidding out that project, managing that project, right. or a certain cost. Right. Right, so they say based on the valuation, here's all the things we've discussed and, and identified. What do you what what do you want to do with referendum? We the whole the whole piece could be a hundred million dollars. Well, we're not maybe we don't do a hundred million, but we do forty, and you guys get to decide that and what does it look like, and then they will say, okay, based on the board's direction, we'll we'll engineer all of these things, do the uh, leg work, do the bidding, do the oversight, do the com the commissioning. Right. So they'll, 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 it's a turnkey operation for them. So it's, it's based on things that were, for example, in the referendum or that they did a study on that requires some right. management that we would typically maybe look for outside to do. They would be the... They're, they're, they would they're be the ones the, that are going to be driving the green. projects. You guys get to decide what the projects are and how much and again, that percentage, you know, that fee, um, you know, is not known up front. They, I, based on their their presentation, I thought they said it was one to, between one and two percent. Right. You know, and, and so because we're working a, on right big dollar so projects. Just to clarify, you know, in terms of there is a cost here, there is a yes. um, and how do you gauge that relative to you right. know just making sure we're making an informed decision? Sure. Yes. Yes. They're basically like a general contract, right, for these projects, right? They, in a way, yeah, yeah, in a way, yeah. I think uh, we had for CISA 10, um, their facility studies, if we did, it was 2% fee for construction management. And if we just went with the facility study, we were seven cents per square foot. Nexus was one to 2%, and they um, did not provide anything that sounded like if we didn't do if we just went with a facility study that that's what they would charge i don't remember I just right yeah they, yeah they would they could they could come up with a number right um it would take them a little bit longer to say well we're going to do everything under the sun 
I asked them to do the boiler and heat plant type of stuff, which was a, a limited scope. In, in, in the survey, um, this would include the total facility needs. Right. So we're talking also about furniture. Yeah. Yes. We're talking yeah. about technology. So everything. So, 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 so in reference to that, then, then for example, we've identified technology is outdated, needs to be changed. Yes. There would be a fee associated with that if they're involved in that work, or will there be some cases where they're not involved in the work and we just do it because they've done a survey. There are, the, I do remember in their presentation that they identified owner projects that we could do. Like okay. I've got a master electrician and a data guy that they, we could pull our own wires and do some things. Uh, so that they identify areas where we could be more efficient in our own, own work that we do or small projects. And they, they'll, that's part of that morning or Saturday that they would figure out what can we do in-house to do things or what can we do and what are we going to do in a bigger scale? So, so a couple of thoughts here relative to if we move down this road with a recommendation to the full board is the contract review is very important, you know, possibly even having legal, you know, just to make sure we understand. Sure. You know, sure. That, that and, yeah. and that there's no surprises down the road. I mean, everything sounds very reasonable for me, but I'm just also, this is, this is a big thing that you're wrapping your arms around. You don't want to have the questions raised afterwards, you know, uh, you know, with that could have been clarified up front. Yep. Yeah, and I agree. I think that's why it would be good to have to your point legal or someone would do that. Just, just because it's a that. significant contract that would be and sure. And if yeah. contracts are typically legal and they're prepared by their legal, yeah. we should have ours review. And that's that's quite often recommended. Obviously attorneys like to recommend that type of work, but uh, <laughs> I do think it has merit. Mm -hmm. yeah. And Bob Burns would be happy to review that for us. You know, he, uh, I've reached out to him recently about several contracts, you know, just working through just a standard procedure for when we have contracts come in. You know, him and I hadn't connected before um, a month or two ago. And so now we have that, you know, just connection to just make sure that we're, we're tight with our process on that for review. So I think, too, we, this, you know, the chances we're going to do something is very strong you know what i mean where like if we just did the study and walked away that's where the cost would be where right. we know for sure we have to get going on large projects so i think it's the safest time it's not like five years from now after we've done a bunch of stuff and then we might do something or we might not do something so uh you know that was um i feel comfortable with that as well because we know we have substantial work that we need to get cracking yeah. The, the thing that is important to remember is I represent a, a good portion of the pie. IT has a sliver that I'm not focused on. Um, the principals have areas that they want to improve instructionally. And I only know those when there's an issue. And so they would say, well, I want to create this space because it's not, it doesn't suit our special ed needs or whatever. That's what the, the survey would look at. Anyone who spends money would identify, the athletic director would say, yeah, the JFK track is, now 1963 was a good year. I was born that year. <laughs> but that also means it's, that's when the earth's crust cooled. It's pretty old. <laughs> and we need to look at doing a better, a better surface for, for our kids. And, and so while I have that on my radar, because I've, I've done some sampling to make sure we don't have environmental issues like uh, formaldehyde or mercury, um, I know that that track should be looked at to repair. So Stan would be, you know, vested in sharing what kinds of things. We have a great 35th soccer complex, but it needs drainage. We have one and a half good fields where you can't play on a half. My guys don't mow it because we sink our tractor up to its axles in certain areas. And so we've got a great piece of property that we could develop into a really nice complex. And that would be probably one of the ideas that would be floated to you guys to say, what do you think of this? So then everything gets looked at. And that's what I like about it because I know IT has needs, but I couldn't speak intelligently on all the needs IT has. I would also suspect that there is there's some uh, uh, level of 
consultation here that is somehow helping the board and, and administration separate out between uh, needs and wants, right? Uh, as well as options, right? You know, there are obviously various ways. You know, you could build an elaborate building, or you could build something that just really meets your needs. So I imagine we could have similar things depending on what we might be talking about with a facility need or a technology need. Additions like we talked about with Lincoln High School cafeteria. You know, we we need more capacity to seat kids. Um, I, I know that that's a fact, but we would need help designing what that looks like or, or looking at our building to see what we could do to improve that space so we have more kids being able to, you know, eat lunch and not have to eat in the hallways or stairwells or on the benches in the hallways or, or whatever it might be. They like that though. Right. I know they like that. <laughs> yes. The band room. My they grounds guys have room. to dodge the apples sometimes. <laughs> so the, the recommendation is the uh, administration is recommending the MPSD engages into a project development agreement with Nexus Solutions to complete a facility survey for Manitowoc Public School District. The survey will be provided to the MPSD administration and school board to determine pathways to referendum options and serve as a major resource in planning for capital improvement projects for years to come. So that would require a motion to move forward to the general board. Is anybody inclined to move that to general board at this time? Sure. What do you got? I just I just wanted to talk a little bit about CISA 10 because I feel like we're not talking about them at all. And at first I really liked them and their personality I thought was wonderful, but I had a couple of apprehensions, apprehensive things about them. One was their location, the fact that they're on the opposite side of the state, and I thought we'd probably incur a lot of costs with that. And honestly, I'm just gonna put it right out there. Well, another is that they are less experienced, it seems. Nexus seems far more experienced and very thorough. And um, what are the insinuations that they made? Kind of jokingly, but not about, you know, we don't have cottages on lakes. And I don't think I appreciated that very much. So um, yeah, where I thought Nexus, you know, at first I wasn't, I didn't buy into the like, oh, it's for free. And then, oh, yes. you know, like yeah. at first I thought it was too yeah. slick too, just like what you're saying, Chris. And, but the more I thought about it, they seem very, and I wrote notes down here, comprehensive. They seem like they have integrity and they're realistic, even though the 100% thing seemed like really, again, kind of slick. But he did mention later that, okay, because somebody asked him a question, yeah. it's not always the first time around. But they seemed like they really take on the whole picture. and. I thought more than anything for me, it's based on the past performance with the, the pool. Because they're, they, they're showing us how much they stand behind what they do yeah, and, yeah. and how much like kind of customer service we'll have with them. So that's just where I'm coming from. And I wanted to mention that because we weren't even talking CISA ton. Um, and at first I thought, split, the more I thought about it, I think that Nexus seems like the real deal and, and the best. You get suited the whole, for our the district. Whole thing with that. You get yeah, the, the whole, whole thing. thing. We know what we're getting, I think. Yeah, let's not forget CISA, another CISA actually. CISA 2. Yeah. And not their own. Right. Yeah, there were some seemed, flags. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, those guys seem nice, but yeah, I, I right. got a better. It, it seemed like the other guys were doing it longer and just had, had to figure it out better. Yeah. Right. Same. Yeah, they were endorsed. It'd be great for a small school system. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. I think, and we may find through the study that they create a vision of certain possibilities of things that we haven't even considered, you right. know, and I think that's what's really nice about having yeah. an outside vendor come yeah. in. Sometimes they see things in other districts yeah. and- And I think the timing is, is really good too because of the strategic plan that we're in the process of. Mm -hmm. I think it just all adds to mm -hmm. really mm -hmm. wanting to develop a plan and work the plan. Yep. Well, and with their presentation too is very, very thorough. Like ever, I remember they had staff and stuff right. from our district where these attendants have that. So I just thought if those were indicators of the experience that we'd have with them, I would rather go with Nexus. So that's part of why I would, I would agree. And the no upfront cost was nice too. I, I think really the only concern I would have, and I, Jim brought it up, is just making sure that we review that contract so we mm -hmm. understand what the minimums are and what that percentage is. Uh, you know, just that's all clearly defined going into it. But so assuming we get that figured out and our legal approves it, I think. So I probably think. we're looking at putting this on the general rather than next week. Yeah, I would put it on. I mean, we're not rushing something where we thought we might have had a need to really do something in a short period of time. 
we've got more time. Obviously, the sooner it gets done, the better. Mm -hmm. uh, but I, I think at the regular would be fine. Mm -hmm. Well, I like well, it. Well, again, you know, yeah. you know, the sooner they start, the more we might gain, even for, for that referendum. So, so really, you know, at the, we had previously discussed actually putting it on the special. You know, just oh. to try to get. Well, if we think you know, Bob can do it, that's also fine. keep in mind. Yeah. Well, we could always, you know, uh, they could approve it with with attorney review, oh, and true. you know, mm -hmm. and with the caveat that the attorney will review the conditions of the contract, right. you know, to protect our interests. Yeah, keep in mind too that there was a timeline that they said they were able to do. It right. would be tight, um, and it can be slowed down. So that's in reference to um, seeking referendum. Mm -hmm. um, because obviously there is a timeline that's associated with that. Um, CSATEN did say that uh, they would not be able to, they would need more time to actually complete this work. Um, Nexus said they could do it. So at the same time. Yeah, so I would suggest the special meeting for okay. approval. Mm -hmm. That was kind of my question, read my mind. <clears throat> and we can work to get a, a contract that can reach out and right. start that process with them. The board could approve that with the commissions too. I mean, mm -hmm. uh, that, that's, that's, uh, that's good. So uh, do we have any motions that are being made? I'll, I'll make the motion to accept the, no, to accept mm -hmm. the recommendation from administration mm -hmm. recommending that the MPC, and the MPC, engages into a project development agreement with Nexus Solutions to complete a facility study survey for the manager truck public school district and then that be forward Angela. to the board. <laughs> Just reading it. <laughs> I'm not that good. <laughs> Trying to help you guys out a little yeah, bit. You. You know, you... You've done that before. Thank you, Angela. <laughs> I'll yeah. second that. Second. All right. So we have a motion and a second. All those in favor uh, to uh, Move forward with the recommendation, signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed? All right. Motion carries, and we will be saying this on the special meeting. Excellent. Uh, next item on the agenda is the long term capital improvements plan approval. Okay. So, uh, really excited to share with you. Uh, and CISA 6 was a huge, uh, huge partner in compiling our information. Uh, you know, we had uh, some models that we looked at for other uh, just capital improvement project plans from other districts and, you know, and seeing what some of the samples that like Nexus and CISA tenant plan or provided. Uh, it was just nice to see our own information in, in kind of like a similar uh, or in just in a nice presented format. So, uh, you know, kind of to carry off of the, the past agenda item, you know, the full facility study would take this current long-term capital projects plan to the next level, you know. So this is our, our long-term capital projects plan right now as it stands. It's our work to date. But then every every year we should be revising this moving forward. So it's just something that we had as a gap that we, you know, we're working to resolve and we're just always going to, going to want to make this a priority for review and updates. So, uh, you know, I had some just basic information at the beginning of the of the booklet. Uh, we had some really nice photography donated by uh, Bill Pullman, who is referenced in here. And then it just, you know, goes over an overview of how we categorize the needs at the buildings. And Chris, you know, worked on this uh, over the past few years with uh, both uh, our, our previous business managers and, and, and superintendents as well, and myself to compile this information. So uh, just really happy with how it came together. There was a, a summary of about $35 million that encapsulates all the you know, identified needs to date. Some items we don't have numbers for, like for example, the Lincoln High School cafeteria, like an addition for that. We don't, we never got a formal quote or have a, a solid estimate on something like that. But uh, this does kind of give us a, a sense of where, uh, you know, where our, our larger needs are, but it's not a complete list. Chris, did you want to add anything to that? Nope. I'm here for questions if you have any. So is this kind of like a, a mini version of what we would get from Nexus, I take it? That's probably not 
is up to date and current. Yes. Well, this would just be scratching the surface with mm -hmm. with some of my some of my costs here are guesstimates. You know, like the elevators. I I got something from Otis today um, that says that uh, a forty one year old uh, elevator at Washington would be to modernize it would be one hundred twenty five thousand. I think I guessed a hundred thousand. So. So some of these are just kind of rough guesses of, of what I, what I know, or some of our square foot costs. Just thinking. Yeah. So. Dollars flying everywhere. Yeah. yeah. And there's fun historical information in here as well. You know, just to kind of fun <clears throat> to have that information. I think the public enjoys that too. Mm -hmm. uh, I thought it was really cool. I I love this stuff uh, to see like how much certain schools were purchased for like the land and the value you know i jackson i just i don't know i can remember jackson offhand real easily eleven thousand dollars for the land and one hundred and seventy-five thousand to build the oh, building yeah. itself you think oh my gosh and we had the records from mckinley were in here i took them out since mckinley isn't our building anymore but you know it talked about like you know the each edition how much it costs and it's like wow you know what money could buy yeah, at that right. time you know yeah. not anymore yeah. uh, so i think like jefferson was built for five million dollars if i'm remembering right and now it's you know worth well more than that so it just yeah. um yeah just, it's just interesting to see that it just this is a nice thing to extend out to our community and try to educate them on the needs as well uh we've been working on this for for years we've just never put it into a formal plan yeah. and uh as the recommendation states, you know, we just would like the approval uh, of the plan so we can file it with DPI and share it with the public. And I, um, as far as the plan goes, um, other than giving, you know, providing it to DPI and sharing it with the public, seeing as how we are having that study done, is this document going to be have any utilization beyond um, those three areas, you know, obviously provided to Nexus. Uh, if Nexus is the uh, um, uh, project uh, developer, um, providing it to the public and then providing it to DPI, is this mm -hmm. going to have any usage beyond? Would we find any value um, so that it's just not a dust, you know, on a shelf collecting dust? Or is this going to be out on the website? Are mm -hmm. we going to see yeah. this? in mm -hmm. multiple areas for people to access i guess too yeah yes that was one of the main intents to really make sure i mean because we really um you know we've been doing this work behind the scenes but not formally putting out and, and sharing it with the public i one of the pieces of feedback that i remember hearing when i came into the district and we're in the last referendum is like you know we haven't seen a capital improvements plan you know i remember that stuck with me because i heard it more than once saw notes about that on social media and uh you know, this is a big step for us to put this together and, and you know, to revise this now that we have kind of like a base structure will not be uh, too difficult to do. So, and it just gives us a, a, a starting point. It's gonna, it's gonna be till spring. I mean, I don't know how long it'll take Nexus to do their review, right. but you know, we're going to, I'm gonna be recommending that we go out for referendum in spring. So this will help kind of set the stage for it. Was there any cost by going with CESA 6 uh, to have this study put together here? Uh, they didn't complete any study per se. Uh, it's just Lisa Sink and her team, they do all of our like communications, our marketing and, and branding it for the district. So gotcha. um, was there a cost that was associated with that? It's just a part mainly of um, like what they their work with us. So Our membership. Mm -hmm. Okay, so yeah. it was. Mm -hmm. It's included in the it membership included. of our. Okay. Mm -hmm. I would, I would also just want to add to that, if you don't mind, mm -hmm. don't that know. the things that are in here are the things that I, in the six or seven years I've been here, know and, and put in. So some of the things I have very good numbers on, some of them are just guesses. Like the, the project furniture I know for an elementary school, we can, per 25 classroom kids, desks, seven grand. So we try to figure out, and we just kind of extrapolate that. I know when we did the uh, the ceiling work at Lincoln, we brought everything through the window that we demoed. 
And when they put the window back in, it was 13 grand. So then I'm mm -hmm. counting sections of windows, like classrooms that have three windows. There's 13, there's 13, there's 13. So, you know, mm -hmm. some of this is by gosh and by golly. Some of this is by square footage. And some of this is by extrapolation of real costs uh, and a whole smattering of all that stuff. I wouldn't want the public to think that this is all inclusive or how come you said this was only going to be this much money at this building and it was way bigger because this is just scratching the surface. I just want to be very so how are we transparent gonna... about that and, and, and having people understand that um, I, I don't sit every day and do this, but I put together over the years, I've been here different spreadsheets with different columns that I've been writing stuff in. Right. Yeah. So as far as that goes how is that information going to be conveyed so that we're not convoluting the message of need that nexus is going to be bringing forward and now we're saying hey this is this right i mean we, we very well could muddy the water yeah we already thought we understood what your needs were right so how are we going to bridge that gap it explains in one of the pages of the booklet i mean i think we should add like let's say if we're going to put this on facebook put a little like hey this is our 22 um long range capital improvements plan we will be doing a more thorough and in-depth study i'm trying to think of what page it's on it's the financial planning one i think just having a small paragraph in the very beginning and yeah. kind of like a disclaimer right. saying like yeah. these are just right guesses and right. only part, part of what we need and just be it's kind really of open like and honest about it. Yes. Yeah. And just, but there are parts in here yeah. you might be interested in seeing. And I also would suggest that I thought it was really nice in the memo portion, mm -hmm. that first piece that you sent us, it had a QR code. Yeah. And so I think we should start using some of those maybe. Mm -hmm. I thought that was a really good idea because a lot of people are using those and find it easier to mm -hmm. navigate. So that would be a, a great thing to have like right in the very beginning. But yeah, I think you should have a big one for, for Oh, yeah. what's that? Yeah, I made the, the QR code I was showing. For the, for the, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that was really <laughs> smart. That was great. It's all, oh, oh, those are fun to make. I was showing Jim how to, you know, scan it with his phone. And then it just kind of me, you know, if you don't use QR codes. <laughs> no, but it's, and our public likes that's, you know, that's a very much a tech savvy I thing. And we can put that on the, <laughs> on Facebook or we can put it on posters or, you know, and just have like a, um, you know, we could, I could reach out to Lisa too and, and have her make kind of like a one page poster that would have that QR code to the full plan. So just really happy with how i mean it just looks very nice too um I'm trying to think of where i put that note and i mean people are i'm not going to expect people to uh you know look I, yeah, that would be very important that, 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 that is registered i'm reserved. still but very just, i'm still very apprehensive <clears throat> i'll just be very honest with you <clears throat> that about putting this out there and the reason that i'm um, hesitant yeah. about putting this out there is because i think it very will could send mixed messages that, you know, if, if in fact Nexus comes forward and they've have identified more than $35 million in um, needs, we're gonna have a mixed message and a paragraph is not a good enough disclaimer to get people on back on board. I think we very well could be shooting ourselves in the foot, but possibly. What if you name it tip of the iceberg? I don't know, I mean. Well, why don't we ask Lisa? No, that would, you know what she so suggests yeah i mean and we can i think a lot of it is just um she, i i understand what you're saying and we've had many discussions about the, this the, i've served the, same, the thing. same thing with yeah. you know yeah. in terms of what potentially could happen here yeah. could we it's run this by, if, if we're looking to nexus should we maybe run this by nexus and see what their thoughts are because this is what they're going to be they're going to be also doing that yeah they're going to take this and expand on it probably I mean, right. and yes. then mm -hmm. all of a sudden they're going to you know but they're, they don't they're want their the communication angle at all. yes exactly and they yes. don't want their perfect record of 100 mm -hmm. tarnished right i just, just i'm sorry i was just going to comment real quick to colin's point if if we put that out there and it says 35 million and then nexus comes back and it's like 100 or something then you know I think people might, or some people might look at that as like, how are we off by so much? Right. So it might be mm -hmm. better off. Uh, well, I appreciate this, yeah, but yeah. I think, yeah, absolutely. Oh, no, no, no. I, I'm, wondering, I'm wondering if, 
you know, as part of communication that we roll out the announcement of using Nexus by saying, let's show you what we've been doing. And, and while mm-hmm. this is great, we didn't, we felt like we didn't have a comprehensive plan, which is why we're, mm-hmm. exactly. we want to introduce you to Nexus. And that's what we're going to be doing over the next two months or three months. So, Nexus is working confident. Yeah. yeah. I mean, you know, if Nexus comes out all slick and everything together and, People are going to say, "Wow, that's a lot of money," but gee, that's a good plan. Whereas we're just we're just punting now, and I just don't think we need to reveal that. I mean, it's an old Machiavellian thing, like you know, appear to be smart. Yeah, and that's what I do. Yeah, yeah, yeah I know you do. Yeah. <laughs> but I, I don't. I really don't see the need to sort of do preliminaries on this. I think that it's not only a little bit confusing. Uh, because if you've done it, why do you need Nexus? And if you have, if and if you do Nexus, which we'll we'll do, um, gee, how come you guys were so off? And I think the cost of, I mean, Phipps will tell you the cost of building stuff and fixing stuff is just keeps going up, and it will now with the increase in, in interest rates too. So I don't think we want to like look like. We're incompetent. Yeah. And I, I understand you're really proud of the document and it looks beautiful, but yeah. I also understand what everybody is saying. There is that hesitation. Yeah. That that makes that that's no point taken and that that's there's nothing wrong that's it's good for actually, it's good for our it's really good for us to understand. Yeah. This, is, this is why I really was pushing to bring Nexus to the table. So mm-hmm. we had because I was looking at what we were doing and I was mm-hmm. in my own mind saying but you know it's mm-hmm. it's not it's not total it's not comprehensive yeah uh, and and i was even concerned about working with the board <clears throat> in terms of what our takeaways were mm-hmm. <clears throat> well and in, in the booklet just a couple of quick points just because all everything you're mentioning there is merit 100 percent uh without a doubt uh, it, on page three, we mentioned while extensive, the plan includes studies to date. Reviews of instructional equipment, HVAC system, playgrounds, and flooring are not reflected in this report and will be assessed through internal and or external studies in future years. You know, and I, and I know people aren't going to see that. However, the main intent of this document uh, is to we need to have a ten-year capital improvements plan on file with DPI. So. We can oh. choose whether we share it with the masses or not. I mean, I'll whatever you guys want, I'm comfortable with. We could have written something on a Google Doc and, and attached it to an email to DPI that said you guys approved it and we would have been done. So we still we still need an approval on this mm-hmm. because we have to, to meet the requirement to expend our funds from Fund 46. I I 100% understand where you're coming from. And we, we feel that way too. Otherwise, we wouldn't have been looking at Nexus. But what is our deadline for having it approved for DPI? Uh, we should have it approved before we approve our budget, uh, just because we want to expend funds through so, the and budget. And so and we're kind of at this, that point. this project okay. is even beyond what we have. Yeah. set aside in the funds. Correct. So this is kind of touching both areas. It's 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 okay. really identifying short term or immediate mm-hmm. needs. Yes. Relative to what we set money inside, you know, in terms of how we prioritize work. So it's, you know, the long term is the thing that really throws us off. Mm-hmm. You know, versus being an immediate need. Mm-hmm. So as far as the we're required you're you're saying we're we're required to provide this to DPI. A plan, a ten-year long-term capital improvement. We don't plan. have a plan, so they've never been supplied a plan. Well, when the when the fund was started, some documentation was shared with them. Um, to I haven't been able to find it. I'm sure it, that's it's just a it's a very clear requirement of the starting the fund, and I'm I'm positive that Ken did that. But you can just say we're going to work on our roofs. I mean, you could literally make it yeah, as simple perfect. as that. I mean, mm-hmm. you don't you don't have yeah. to. Pomp can and circumstance s- is not required. Yeah. Um, could we say so- <laughs> that our our plan is in process with working with Nexus, and that Nexus is doing a comprehensive study? of our buildings and grounds and we will be 
looking to act upon what that study is in the upcoming time? Uh, that's we, too much for them. Don't we have to approve a plan every single year? Well, now that we're going to start to expend from the fund, yes. And yeah. so if we approve this now, we can like we kind of amend it. Right? But, right. but, but again, yes. you know, yeah, one, one thing we're access. providing to the state, not necessarily to the public. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I think this this is insane. I don't think, I don't think it's for the public. public. Yeah. I mean, it would be great later when it gets tweaked when we say, have more numbers. Say we're going to work on it. We'll just go. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's good. Yeah. Well, I mean, I understand the I understand the view of transparency mm -hmm. that you know. Here's what we've been given. You know, let's include the public. We want to have the public be in included on that. But it some, seems like you know we have. You know, we're trying to convey message. You know, not to, only to the state, but we're not we're not even having that full picture to to the state that seems accurate. Trans so, transparency isn't giving a message though, it's giving an accurate message. And we right. know that what's yeah. here is not, not accurate, accurate right now so for what we're going to be saying. We're also not being sense. accurate then in, in our account to the state too. So it's kind of a rough well, work, isn't it's, it? Yeah. You're, they don't see how they don't give specific requirements as far as like you Indeed, have yeah. to include all of this. So right. like what we're doing really I yeah, mean we could just have a list of projects. Yeah, no, I'm not saying in regards We've to about yeah, I'm talking about transparency in the community. Yeah. Like it doesn't make right. sense to put yeah. this out right now when we know there's more coming. It's right. not a total picture. Right. Right. And, and we and we know and we're acknowledging that in there, but we have to give yeah. them we're just giving them like a at this point in time. It's a it's a point in time. Does it and have so, to be called long term? Could it be called short term? Because that's kind of really what it you know that when we would do another one, like so, when we like Nexus is going to do their, you know, if approved and everything, they're going to do their full survey, right? Yeah. What we would do is we would come back likely to this document mm -hmm. and then retool it because it's a simplified version, and you know we're not going to give. I mean, maybe we would make it a PDF and share it with the public. I mean, we certainly could do something like that out of the Nexus stuff, but this is kind of a simple high level view of what the needs are in the district does, and we would just does, revise does it. Does Nexus also provide summary high profile type? And they, they might provide something that replaces this, but we needing to get something on, I mean, with the, well, we could, I could certainly just draft a document that would be a list of things. Um, I would use these things in here and, and it doesn't have to be, doesn't have to be fancy. Um, it, it just we have this. I and mean, I don't. It, this uh, is. Uh, so we're does, for, I'm sorry. I just just want to make sure because it, it's not. It wasn't very clear to me either. Everyone okay. realizes the reason we have to do this is because we want to spend some money that is in this. Right. Yes. Yeah, so, yeah. And that we 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 cannot expend that money unless so we, have a, we have this. We and show we, a reason to. Right. And Nexus is not going to have that done by the time we adopt our budget. Mm -hmm. So what's the downside of just letting them submit this and then for that purpose. Yeah. yeah. It's just for that purpose. That's all it is. Okay, yeah. Just to check a box and that's what we're mm -hmm. doing. Just check yeah, a it's box. checking a box. If, if you right. really don't want us to share it, like publicly push it, we don't we don't need to. So, know, so it's something to think about. Yeah. I mean it's, I guess it's and not to overcomplicate this, but I think you just address our immediate need to re meet a requirement. Mm -hmm. Two is you heard Angela talking about renewing the referendum. Okay, that's kind of a renewal with potentially more money. She's identifying, well, sometimes we obviously provide rationale why that's still needed, including some capital projects, some of its operations, it's a lot of its operations. And then it's a long-term thing. What are we, are we doing planning for long-term, you know, in terms of, geez, you know, should we look at a facilities referendum? Should we look at a combination of, you know, so a much bigger picture relative to, to moving forward. So there's almost three things here that are under consideration this meet this immediate need for compliance. Two is get ready for renewing an operating referendum and not to wait till the last minute next year. Mm -hmm. And then third, you know, even next year, how does a longer plan influence what we do? Like part of Nexus is um, like services wouldn't, I mean, they're gonna give us a report, but like the district every, you know, like once, Three years from now, when we look back and say, "Remember what Nexus did," 
we're going to have something similar to this working document, right. but we'll, you know, have a list of things completed recently, <laughs> you know. Right. Um, so, yeah, know that it's all helps. So the recommendation uh, by our administration is to uh, approve the 2022 long-term capital improvement plan to be filed with DPI um, and shared with the citizens of Manitowoc Public School District. Um, at this time, it sounds like the committee is um, in agreement that the uh, sharing of this document would only muddy the uh, communication from this body to the public. So we would probably refrain from sharing that plan at this time uh, and simply just provide this to DPI to check a box. Is that correct? The, the oh. question I would have, is there a legal requirement that this be, you know, quite often sometimes DPI would not only mm -hmm. have a requirement, but that it's shared with the public and I don't know if there's any requirement. There is no requirement to share then, with, I mean, they, I would, so it just only, it only help us, DPI, but. Right? It, it mainly needs approval just to be our long-term capital improvements plan. And then I file it, you know, it, yeah. when we go to referendum, you know, you may think, okay, let's, let's use it. You know, I don't know that you want to right. tie yourself down no. one way or the other. I just, I mean, I really don't like the idea of not sharing things that we're sending to the state, the public. Um, and I really, really don't like that, but I understand the reasoning, so I guess you know it's just it is what it is. It's only so. part of a snapshot. That's I know, I know. I'm just yeah. yeah that's the issue right now. Is that well, the just part hung up on minutia. Yeah. The yeah. other thing, um, you know, along that line of thinking, though, is you are working to share something with the public. You it's are not ready. To, right. It's just not ready yet, and yeah. so you're you're meeting reporting requirements as you're because this has really triggered the need. Mm -hmm. to have something that's more comprehensive. So you really are being truthful and honest because mm -hmm. you recognize the need to have a complete picture and that's what you're working to establish. Uh, I guess that's fair. And ultimately what we'll be sure is going to be a lot more comprehensive and what yeah. current right. Mm -hmm. right. Mm -hmm. so, mm -hmm. For sure. You know, motive has a lot to do with whether you are transparent or non-transparent. And we're not we're not saying we should be transparent, non-transparent for sneaky reasons. Right. We're just saying, look, the communication will be better if we wait and have better material pertaining to this right. to share. Uh, that's good yeah. rationale. Yeah. Uh, you know. And I think that's a positive sort of thing. Yeah. Is is there any motions uh, that anybody would like to make to this uh, agenda item at this time? I'll make a motion to approve this capital plan, long-term plan, just being submitted to DPI. Okay. Yeah, just put a period of GPI in. Would you like to say? And I will second it. Yeah. All right. We have a motion and a second. Um, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed? All right. Okay. I do really like the packet. It did, yeah. Yeah, it, I, I think we should I think we should ask is, Nexus yeah. to include the pictures in the history. I didn't know cool. like there's that. a lot of stuff that was really done. Cool. I, I, I enjoyed really, that. Mm -hmm. It really was well done. <laughs> 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 it makes it far more interesting than just looking at a whole bunch it's of It's beautiful actually. It's I mean, nice. and it, it was fun to see like the amount per square foot I don't get into, yeah. you know, I was telling Chris like I get confused about acres and all <laughs> that kind of stuff. I, it's not my my gig, oh. but you know like I can work the Excel spreadsheet to come up with the other the fun facts you know so <laughs> i would like to add you know with uh not only what angela did, did but you know also what tisa six did you know both from elisa mm -hmm. really you know uh, it's more than a sounding board there's some good expertise out there where, where we obviously touch base with them with some of the stuff on the strategic planning yes you know knowing the importance of communicating well and not to uh, potentially uh, miscommunicate something where right. You're doing, you're trying to clean up because that was not what you intended, but that's right. what you communicated. Right. Yeah. Truth in the truth in advertising. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. Um, and then the next item on the agenda would be for the transfer of service overview update. Yeah, I just wanted to 
briefly share this with the board. Uh, there is no action on this item. Transfer of service is a unique opportunity for, uh, for us to expand our revenue limit authority uh, through, you know, through the changing of enrollments. So what ends up happening is we've had, uh, especially through COVID, we had a large fluctuation. Hi, Chris. Thank, Thank you, Chris. Chris. Thank you. Um, just, uh, just change in student pop in enrollments, people um, in open enrolling out and in, and just people moving around in general. And we had a large and flexible special education and um, EL, English language learner students. And we had mentioned, we had add, added some positions to the district, if you'll remember us talking about some of that, just due to the, the large influx of numbers. Uh, we'll have uh, influx of students from outside of the country, different states, as well as within the state. So what transfer of service allows us to do is to sort of petition for more money because of the additional services that we have to provide and through more students. So there's like three parts to it. So as first time filing it last week, uh, we have to just list the students, where they came from and then uh, how much additional costs we estimate that we incurred by based on like the, the, the caseload that they are on and the proportion of that that they represent. So uh, we completed part A by last Friday and then if it's an in-district uh, request or in-state's request, excuse me, we have to uh, share that with the other district and they have to confirm that they moved from their residence change from the outside district to our district. So. And then in some of that, like we're going to have to tighten up our process just kind of internally and have some spreadsheets working all year where like EL students that come in from other districts and, and um, special education students can be just added on these spreadsheets and we can confirm that they truly, you know, changed residence. Because that's one thing I'm finding is we get the Part B confirmations in is sometimes it's a case where um, a student might have open enrolled last year out to another district and then came back. So they came to us and we had a large, they might have been part of that large influx, but they were really our students the whole time. So, um, you know, at this point, it looks like we're looking over $100,000 that we'll be able to add to our revenue limit. Uh, and that could, that'll go up over the rest of the week. I think there's a, until the end of this week, districts have the time to uh, sort of reply to that. So it's on, you don't always want to go for transfer of service. Like if our mill rate was high and we were, we did not want to make it go any higher, we wouldn't file for transfer of service. Uh, so that's just, it has to be used strategically. And I would recommend that we do use it this year because our mill rate is falling as low as it is. Yeah. I, and when Angela brought this to me, I, mm -hmm. I like the, uh, the idea behind it. It sounds, uh, I mean, I agree with some, to the where the mill rate is at right now it is very concerning um and i would like this to definitely be doing this so thank you for putting it together and just finds you know more revenue for us so that's good uh, does anybody else have any uh, discussion or questions regarding the topic all right great does that go into i just with the general fund or does that go into just special ed and um uh into yeah. the general fund okay mm -hmm. so we don't need action on this though no okay. no actually yeah, i i guess it's i have possible, possible action on that but uh you know that is something where there is no action required you know the district just makes a you know I, we were not formally required to come and get permission to file right. for transfer of service, which I, as I say that, and I think about it, you know, cause it expands your revenue limit authority. You know, we just, I'm working to inform you and, and sort of seek the blessing, you know, for yeah. doing that, uh, as I see it would benefit us. Well, and to that, I guess maybe it is, it is, uh, I still, I think it still is wise to put in their possible action because mm -hmm. say the board does say, yeah. Hey, we don't want that to be done. Mm -hmm. We don't agree with the strategy behind this. You know, it does offer up that opportunity for us mm -hmm. to weigh in uh, and say, let's hold off. But I don't think that anybody is feeling that at this time. So, um, great. Okay. Thank you. Um, the next item on the agenda is the sale of property on 8th and Columbus Streets. Um, I did actually hear from uh, the former chair of Building and Grounds on this, and she 
uh, Lisa Johnson. She weighed in. She told me a little bit about mm -hmm. some of the history to this. It sounds like this has been brought to us before. Um, it was brought forward about four years ago. Um, and uh, they had um, opted not to move forward uh, because mm -hmm. it sounded like there was a fence that was possibly. And then it was also brought to your committee just recently. And then it was also um, that was was that also discussed at that yeah, point yeah, too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so it was decided mm -hmm. that this be brought to the finance committee um, because it is, I guess, dealing with finance mm -hmm. and the sale of our assets. Um, so yeah, does anybody have any that the, anything that they would like to speak to regarding this matter? You can ask a really dumb question. The corner of it's eighth and Columbus. Um, which one? Oh, it's it's, the, it's a vacant lot. Yeah, uh, west. Yeah, but there was a house. I mean, like, are we talking about north, south, east, or west? Because I know all the corner north, west, west, northwest, northwest, yeah. west, north, yeah. west, mm -hmm. where there used to be a home. Yeah. No, nope, there used to Here be a store. Right I'll show you a the store, picture. Well, a building. There was a store there that used to hang <laughs> out and it was problematic. And, oh. <laughs> Who were you there, Carrie? Well, I lived in the neighborhood. Did you really? Yeah, well, That's I lived cool. on South Seventh Street, and I'd walk to school, you know. So I kind of walked in that way, and it was you know, and kids would go there and smoke, mm -hmm. skip yeah. class. So, um, but the building was taken down a few years ago. Yeah, they ripped the building right. down as soon as they bought it, yeah. and I think the neighbor, the neighbors were pretty irritated by the kind of the congregation of. I'm sure they were. So it, it 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 suited everybody's interests except the screw our students' interests. Yeah. So you know, that was. Yeah. Okay. So I have a question. We're not doing anything with it now, right? I just there's nothing sitting there uh, that I saw. So if I you know I'll just here I'll pull it up and yeah, you I can see on my yeah. I, I don't know if anybody can see on my iPad it's there. Yeah. But that is Street View right there. That this is the uh the property that in question. Um is that the south yeah. east corner? That's the northwest yeah. corner. Mm -hmm. corner. Okay. Yeah. So I mean I, I guess I view it as uh, you know if it's if the Properties there. We're upkeeping it. We don't have any use for it. I don't see anything, any use for this. It was kind of, you know, buildings and grounds weighed in on it um, that they saw neither pro or con to, to its sale. Um, so we could probably use the money. Um, and then we're also then not spending money on upkeeping a property that we have no intention of utilizing. Um, so I'm Yeah, we have to do the the snow removal on that corner. Okay. Mm -hmm. Cut the grass, but it's 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 know, nominal. It's right. a it's a nickel and dime so right. it cost. To it. It's still something. I mean, it would take a few hours. But yeah. is there any potential for using it as like a parking lot or anything? Mm -hmm. Or like no, there's not. It's not okay. that big. So I mean, yeah. Yeah, buildings and grounds explored all that, and they, they did, did not. Yep, yeah, they there did not, not feel use. that there was a use for it for expansion or anything that we would be doing the only thing that was you know that was stated with <clears> that <throat> maybe could run in contrary was the possibility that the individual i guess in the past had expressed interest for a fence that to be placed there and um that would be um the obstruction a, a possible ex obstruction i yeah. mean the city i know that they do have uh different sets uh that was uh, discussed, but uh, as far as uh, you know, I guess we can't control every aspect of our. I, w I wonder how much. I mean, it, you, it, to put a fence up, you'd need a building permit, and I don't know if the city would say, "Well, that may you know block you on a on a what it amounts to during school time, pretty busy, probably pretty busy busiest. intersection, probably mm -hmm. one of the busiest." Yeah, it is. So if the, I, I don't know if the, the city gets a call on that or not. Does anybody know? Well, we could consult with the building inspectors. I mean, or the, uh, I'm trying to think, is it, would it be the building inspector? I don't know. I'm not uh, sure what department the, you would be. The really good place planning department, I guess. Yeah. They, they handle that. You know. But I, what we could do, I mean, in the, we can bump it out of this committee because it still has to go to general. 
So in the, the meantime, only, the only reason why we have to we have to we have to send it on to you, simply because it, it's a financial transaction. Sure, and we're yeah, not we're, sense, yeah. we're not we're not the committee for that. Okay. Yeah. So I mean, I, I we could run it by the city and, and our and our attorney or anything you know in mm -hmm. that regard up until the general. I see no reason that we hang on to this. I mean, I don't really, I'm not really akin to the, the property one way or the other. Um, so does anybody want to make a motion to the matter to move it out of committee? And in the meantime, There's we can a find out that. recommendation from administration on this panel. <laughs> Great. It's a basic one that just keeps getting kicked around. Right? So, yeah. well, it's, it's just going to get, you know, moved to the general because that's the next step anyways. Well, I think we keep finding out more and more information about it. Like I, I said, I didn't know for sure which one it was. I think Matt Phipps talked to the guy and. He's mm -hmm. reached out to me as yeah, well. I don't know. Okay. He he didn't he didn't spill his guts on. Well, I want to put up a big fence or anything. But, yeah. Um, I, you, you know, I think he just. I, I've not been contacted unless I've missed something. You know. Yeah, and he, I think that we. I wonder, like, from a, a you know, as the district, though, we want to have it. I don't know if it's worth it to have it formally appraised, if you or not. You know, to find out what value we should. I mean, he was. The, the owner put out an offer, but you know, it, you know, we should probably do our due diligence to have it formally appraised and oh, I could yeah, take I care of, so. I oh, could absolutely. take care of that. I mean, if it, it, whatever, I'm just looking for your recommendation too, if nothing else for what, you know, to yeah, probably, take probably serve it. Too. I think that's mm -hmm. a good idea. If, I mean, if there's really no real use that we see for it, unless we're all of a sudden in the business of collecting real estate, which Let's mm -hmm. I, I don't see that. No right? And the and the state says we should get rid of it. Our policy does if we're not going to use it. I mean that it is clear. But I just want to make sure that he's um, you know, kind of in a prime spot to just say like, hey, I'll give you, I'll give you twenty bucks for it, or I'll give you, yeah, right. you know, yeah, like you yeah. know. I, and so I, I I just want to make sure that we you know we don't want to have the taxpayers say to us like, hey, you yeah, know, you, like, gave, that away. you like gave it that. away, and and so that's I mean, but that's so I'm looking for. No, I think that's a good idea. Yeah, but I don't I don't see it. said survey. I'm going to have it surveyed. What would be the point of a survey? Just have an appraisal done. Okay. Well, a survey would be a, the traffic aspect of that the city was weighing. Is that correct? I mean, is that no, kind of it's just a land survey, I thought, to make sure that we know just exactly how much land we've got. But that well, may be that may be already much. available on, on a flat map. Yeah. And, and frankly, I don't care if we want a couple stuff, extra feet right? or not. You'd have to have an appraisal done. Yep. Thank you, yeah. Lisa. Thank you. Yeah. But not a land survey. Okay. Right, so are we in a motion? Did you make the motion? Okay. I'll make a motion to um, accept the recommendation that administration is requesting permission to have the property appraised on the corner of 8th and Columbus, and so that we may or may not enter further discussions regarding that property. I'll second that. Motion second. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed. All right. And then would I just bring that to back to the, the results of the appraisal to back to the committee to next meeting? And probably building a grounds too, though, just so they don't have right now. No, it's not like the financial transaction. We don't, have, we don't have the right to, to, to take action. Their management of our, our buildings and grounds where the. You can just. They're still our grounds. So the yeah. service so right. <laughs> I'll reach out to the city at two just to get gather some information. Yeah. Just hurt, to kind right? of know what I'm assuming. It's, hurt, I'm right? assuming it's still yeah. zoned residential. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. It's just not. It's not the art of the deal. It's just the way. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Next, uh, the last and uh, next item something. on the agenda <laughs> is the MPSD memo uh, regarding the preliminary budgets. Angela. Yeah. Um, so included in board book was the information regarding the preliminary budget. I tried to put um, just kind of a snapshot of all the areas, the previous year, current year, the change, uh, just in a high level view. So I hope it was, this was um, helpful overall. Uh, and then just kind of more, usually I give you like the, um, 
you know, several, several um, hundreds of pages of the budget. And I gave just some more of an over, <laughs> an abbreviated version. So I don't know <laughs> if that was helpful to see. So, uh, so for all funds, uh, we're looking at um, $89 million this year. And uh, I just did want to stress, and I put this in the notes that um, $5.5 million of that that is planned is ESSER funding. So really, if you would take the 2021-22 the budget of $88 million, if we would take out that ESSER funding, we would only be looking at $84 million total. So, mm -hmm. you know, so it just, it, it, it gives, um, we don't want to have like a sort of um, false comfort in thinking, oh, there is no problem here because that money is going to be going away. So, uh, and you know, when we build that level of money for ESSER funding in the budget, it could be that we only expend so much and then we have more to carry through next year. But my, you know, just with how we had planned to use the money, the majority of it was gonna, of the remaining funds were gonna be used this year. So less, less than a million dollars would be available next year should everything go as planned. Uh, just to overall. That, to oh. that note though, uh, Angela. Yeah. How much of our budget, knowing that ESSER funding will go away and a reliance that we have for this budget on that money, how much of our budget is uh, items that are not with a sunset at this hour? at this point, reoccurring expense. Yeah, uh, it was uh, the staffing expenses, you know, there was about, um, I wanna say there was like $1.1 million that was carried through. Uh, I don't have the, the ESSA report right handy right now, but we had about 10 or 11 positions that we added and we're covering and some we knew for sure we're gonna sunset after this year. But, you know, just as a district administration, we're going to need to look and, and evaluate, you know, if we're going to repackage how some of the, you know, positions are within the district in general. Mm -hmm. um, so it is, and part of it was being able to afford, afford the staff increases. Many districts across the state are, are essentially balancing their budgets through ESSER funding because they, we didn't receive any additional money per pupil. So uh, I want to say that one point, uh, about $1 million was the stipends, and then it was about $1.1 million was carried through positions from previous years. And then there were um, just increases in um, just the general staffing increase of 3% was another million dollars. So it was a large portion of that $5 million overall. That, so. will, that will be coming back in, in the future budget. Correct. Okay. Yeah. Can we have that? Uh, and when would we want to be, when would we want to be exploring um, what our options or our <clears throat> plan for um, ensuring that either that funding is no longer sought mm -hmm. or we i mean when are we going to look into deciding how to handle that situation as an administration we're going to have to study the staffing we're going to have to look at that list of, of positions that we added through ESSER funding because that was definitely a clear you know a clear communication that you know we were adding those at the time and we were going to you know take them out or make adjustments proportional to what we had added so mm -hmm. uh this fall already you know even though like we're approving the budget now, you know, the budget process for the next year really should start in November right away. We really always are working on budgets, you know, and, and we'll look by looking at enrollments. We can look at projections. We can um, just talk as an admin team and and just say like, okay, which of, are there certain positions on this list that now we found have been really effective and we want to make other adjustments. So part of how I have the budget uh, modeled out in the in the forecasting tool that I have is taking that money out of the budget that we would put in for you know just just the additional staff amounts the increases themselves do carry forward so that's where uh, taking the conservative approach of doing the three percent and then doing the stipends on top of that was going to minimize the amount that we were going to have to take out of fund balance in the future which was uh, really critical. 
the, what the tricky part is, is, is CPI is looking to be 7%, you know, and, and districts around the state struggled with the 4.7 figure and every district has no additional money per pupil and it's going up to 7% and it's really, it's really tough. So, uh, you know, we're going to, we're going to have to really dig deep on this and, and have discussions and have sort of the, the guidance of the board too on, on where your thoughts are. I can model it all a lot of different ways. You know, we're going to, we're going to have to provide some kind of an increase. You know, we can't say we're not going to, but uh, part of, you know, considering an, an operational referendum, like knowing sort of where that CPI is sitting right now, I can put the staffing in in a couple of different scenarios to see, you know, what would put us in a comfortable range, you know, uh, to make a decision, an informed decision on, on what, how we would handle staff increases in future years. The, the tricky part is with the biennium budget, we're, we're not going to know much about that until after the election. We're, we're not in, in often, I mean, I've, it's, there have been times where st the, the new biennium budget isn't passed until the summer, you know, so we're, we're going to have to really, really think carefully about how we handle those things to protect our, our overall financial picture. So, yeah. And, and so what I'm hearing is, is this is those budgetary items that do not have a sunset and are being utilized for ESSER funds mm -hmm. are currently being reviewed mm -hmm. and Correct. we can expect to have some sort of actionable plan to address that situation sometime after April. Uh, you know, we're going to have to talk much earlier about how okay. we're going to handle. I mean, we're going to have internal discussions late, you know, fall already. We're going to okay. we're going to have to hit the ground running on that because when it when it comes to April, um, by May fifteenth, we have to be giving or we have to be furnishing contracts to teachers, and if we have to, uh, you know, if we were to look at a couple different options and if that would include any change or shifting of staff, we have to provide ample notice. So that, you know, there's a large, a larger process to that. So, um, and if we would decide as a district that we want to maintain those positions and, and, and just work that into like our normal fleet of staffing or however we want to handle it, we just, we can we can frame it up a couple different ways right and to be clear it's not just sure. that you know it's not by reviewing that it's not talking just an automatic elimination it's yes. simply just doing the diligence of Correct. how is this going to be funded if it is no longer going to be funded via this vehicle so mm -hmm. um how many staff is that total well or 10 to 11 it was overall i mean each each staff member if depending upon if they elect in benefits, it's, you know, a, a low range is $85,000, $120,000, you know, it, it depends how many, you know, if you, if, when I run numbers for certain things, a full fleet of benefits is $30,000. So if you have um, like a teacher at the top of the salary schedule who is making 70,000, you add 30,000 onto that, you have 100,000. If they're just starting, then it's only about 70,000. So, you know, it, it, it depends. So. What positions are those? Uh, we had had, uh, we had had some coaching positions that we had added. We had added uh, one or two additional uh, positions just to make smaller class sizes. And the thought at the time was that, okay, if we add them in first grade and then, you know, make smaller class sizes by the time that group would get to like third grade, you know, they would be ready for like the bigger class sizes and that would kind of naturally sunset just with the staffing uh, kind of process that we used already. To clarify though, the coaching isn't like sports coaching. We're talking about like math and reading. Right. Yes, yeah. thank okay. you. I just want to make sure. Oh, good, good yes. coaching, because yeah. that's what immediately went to my head. Yeah, no, no, I apologize. Yeah. I was yeah. like, yeah. Yeah. coach, yeah, all right. And, it, and, and I would really, really defer to, to Pam and Jason. I don't want to start speaking specifically to those positions. Uh, but, uh, you know, when you have a, an academic coaching type position, they'll, they'll teach the, the they'll build capacity in your teachers and they'll 
we'll do that kind of work to help improve instruction that way. So it's not a specific focus um, that directly impacts, it, it impacts students for sure because it builds capacity of the teachers, but it's not a student interactive position. We so, also think, I think in, we, in some cases, I should, it, that's not always, you know, it, it depends based on what the role is. So I really, like I said, I would refer to, defer to Jason and Pam to really, um, you know, share, because there, there are some coaches at the different levels are involved in different ways. So, okay. so it's almost a personnel uh, curriculum conversation almost for those mm -hmm. explorations. I mean, it's fine that we, you know, all as an admin team are going to have to look at it because it impacts all of it. So, yeah. And there, Tony, did you have a follow up? Yeah. I was curious, were there any other positions or was it just the, the coaching? There was, there was some nursing positions that were involved in that. Uh, and right now we maintain that for this year. And you would say, well, there's not as much work for COVID, but we, I, I think we discussed it in another meeting, you know, the, the backlog of work just because they haven't been able to keep up with their regular standard immunizations and all that kind of work through since COVID hit, that's kind of what we're using this year as, and then there's still some of the effects of that as well. So I also think there was, um, counselor uh, position. Yeah. There's also, a, um, we added special eds, a, a new person yes. in a special ed office. Um, that was through flow through money. <clears throat> oh, okay. And not through And then the other one I'm thinking is um, it was a specialist that we were contracting with CISA. Correct. We, but they, we brought them in. That was another one, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. There was, well, part of the CISA contract, we expanded through some of that, yeah, through the coaching, because we had trouble filling some of the coaching mm -hmm. positions. Yep. Can't remember her name off the hand. So, so yeah, we definitely have our work cut out for us with that, and we and we know that we need to uh, definitely dig dig deep into that. So, um, personnel and curriculum, are you either of you guys uh, looking to explore those topics in your, I guess, upcoming meetings? Some of those guidelines. We haven't, and I'd love to avoid it. I know we can't. I uh, yeah, I know. <laughs> It's like paying the bills. Nobody mm -hmm. wants to, right. but you gotta. Absolutely. You know? no. um, Mary has been out. Um, okay. She's back. And um, oh. you know, we had an agenda um, prior to her going in. So I'm sure we'll add to that. Okay. All right. Well, excellent. Yep. Does anybody, uh, we probably need a recommend, or we probably need a, a motion to approve the, the preliminary budget item here. Is this correct? Let me, sorry. Um, yes, is there any uh, any other questions to any any questions or motions? To I got a quick question. I, yeah. I thought I saw somewhere on here when I looked through it that the local tax levy was down. Is that right? Correct. Yes. Yeah. So if you go down on page two with the revenue limit, uh, I just added some things in here to sort of help uh, bring a picture on this. Uh, our state aid has increased quite a bit. Uh, Two million dollars this year is the estimate initially and then the levy down is going to be going down about three million, million which is just very interesting uh, because you know there was lots of messages about increased state aid but really that just means less that we levy to our taxpayers. And so right now uh, the initial estimate is $5.25 for the levy. Uh, that will go up a little bit likely. So I don't want to hold my, you know, I, I'm, I have to provide that to you, but I also want to put a great disclaimer on that. Uh, just because that the revenue limit worksheet, there are several items that need to be updated on that yet. And we just, we're at the point where last Friday was the, the third Friday count. And so next Friday we certify that. The summer school count is it, you know, I had just rehab have the preliminary information for that, that goes into that as well. So um, in those numbers, it looks like the summer school is projecting to be at 150 students and it's looking like it's going to be 118. Uh, when I was looking at that with our summer school administrator and secretary today, that'll mean it's kind of weird. We went down in numbers, but we'll go up and hold harmless. So we'll get like $50,000 because of that. 
So it, it seems like, oh, we went down in numbers, but you know, they kind of pad you when you have your declining enrollment. And then when your enrollment comes up, that hold harmless dis disappears. So and that's after three years, right? It, it's the average of three, the gap, the yeah. current, the three years. So we'll really take the base, the base uh, enrollment and then the current enrollment, and then they compare that and they give you the hold harmless for the gap between uh, whatever the difference is. So uh, it, and then also like the final certification of, of aid happens in, on the 15th of October. And then I think the final equalized value for the land is on October 1st. So, you know, with this whole entire budget, we have to, we have to file the notice for the hearing. So I was talking to Gannett today, I submitted tomorrow morning and um, you know, the, I have to prepare everything based on the preliminary, even though we know we don't have all the data, which is really un so odd. I mean, mm -hmm. I think it's, if I were a board member, I'd be like, that is just, that is really <laughs> weird. Um, so it's, it, but I've, at this point, things aren't going to change too much. Open enrollment could flux quite a bit. That is still at uh, 3.2 million dollars, I believe, right now. But we did have just more students open enroll into our district, which is wonderful. We just want to work to bring the out down. So, so then I'm trying to think of other. I, another point that was pretty interesting, at least interesting to me, is that our. If you look at the mill rate calculation estimate, you know that is just something that people uh, ask about a lot. You know, so you have your local levy amount, then the equalized land value. That that's what gives you your mill rate, and it just was. It's up quite a bit. So. Uh, I did not understand the, uh, as far as the Fund 21 Special Projects Fund. Oh, sure. That one looked really goofy. Um, yeah, can you really I can explain on that. that. Yeah, yeah, I'm happy to do that. So so our Special Projects Fund, we're, we're changing this, how we're handling this in the budget this year. So really, Special Projects is essentially fundraisers, and they're tracked in our ledger through Fund 21. So we really budget next to nothing like a hundred dollars for interest is what we're saying in there okay because we don't we're not going to say hey you all have to you have to raise five hundred thousand dollars <laughs> get to work <laughs> you know we don't we don't say that to them you know it's just safer to say we're not going to budget any revenues because we're not dependent on it for our operations and so before it was on off ledger accounts and so we had to bring them on so it's kind of like we're giving them a budget for their balance. So the balance of our Fund 21 accounts right now is 416,000. And actually we're bringing some athletic accounts like the last step of our uh, compliance with GASB 84 onto the, onto the ledger. So that, that number is going to go up closer to $450,000 by the, by the final budget. So it's, before, when we, before we had to do GASB 84, we would always report like fund 20 or fund, fund 10. And then like the fund 20 would be both the special projects fund and the special education. But special projects fund and special education couldn't be more different from each other. So that's why I had, uh, you know, it, that's why you usually keep special education close to the general fund because you have to tie them out and work them together uh, and to make sure that they balance and then Fund 21 is just on its own. Uh, so yeah, it, it is it's a good question. And then the, the debt service, that's pretty straightforward. We're in our last year of that. And then uh, just what's gonna be in the budget for the capital long-term capital improvements trust uh, is $316,000 worth of items. And then our food service budget, there wasn't any change. So that's where that's at. Are there any other uh, comments, questions? I'm just trying to figure out why my property taxes are going up. Because <laughs> the down, because they went up 16.9%. 16, 16 the equalized oh, value yeah. went up that much. So that is, that is the thing where our mill rate's going to go down, but then the values went up so high. So people are going to say, well, I thought oh. I was going to save. You know, where's my money? You know, and then that's really... Uh, it's just not, we're not in control of that part. You know, I wish we, I wish we could be. Right. We'd, we'd cut everyone a deal, right? But we can't do that. <laughs> <laughs>
we only control the, the mill rates, you know. So. All right. So then, would you be? Are you seeking a motion for to move this forward? Yes, for approval, so we can uh, take it to the and do the budget hearing um, on October 11th. Okay. There's a great recommendation in here. Yeah, is there some? Uh, is there somebody that There's would like to? There's a great recommendation in here. Where is right, it? if you want to read it off. Yeah, where is it? Yeah. <laughs> it is page. <laughs> oh, I was I'm looking I'm... for it before actually. Oh. It's above page one of all the the numbers. So oh, it's yes. the last page of her letter. What did I do? Oh. You made a recommendation. Yeah. Can I try to help out with that. So the recommendation is recommending the approval of the 2022-2023 preliminary budget to be presented at the budget hearing October 11th, 2022 at 6.30 p.m. I so moved. All right, there's a motion on the floor. Do we have a second? Can I ask another question before I... There's a motion on the floor. We would have to wait until the... Uh, you, can, you can make a motion for discussion. For the purposes of discussion, uh, yeah, I'd like to make a motion for discussion. Then. Okay, uh, Jim, I'd be curious to what's your take on this? I mean, given your background in other districts that are financially challenged, in terms of you know, just the you know, just looking at the budget now and knowing that you know, I'm kind of relying a lot on the experts here, but. I, I believe in part, you know, we have a, a revenue problem at the same time. I would, I, you know, meaning, you know, to the extent that uh, uh, the money that we're bringing in, we're a well-funded school district, but I also believe that it's, it's always looking at the expenditures. And, mm -hmm. and I would uh, say that I would expect that I will continue to uncover that we are incurring a reasonable level of expenditures. It's just whether or not they're the right expenditures. If that mm -hmm. makes sense, you know. So it comes back to mm -hmm. looking at the return that you're getting on any position that you might have, any decision that you might have. I mean, you can take it everywhere from curriculum. Are you getting a return on a curriculum versus something else? Uh, are you getting uh, a return on a given position to to accomplish something versus a different strategy for accomplishing that same thing? So that's where I probably see more of the work. Mm -hmm. is this understanding the return on that expenditure rather than so, that, so you that feel like we're going to spend the same amount of money i do might, it but. just may not be in the same way as we try to continue to uncover why we don't yet have the results that we're looking for uh academically if that makes sense now again that's only based on two and a half months i haven't really gotten that deep just in my years of experience uh, i do look for some comparables and you can see, remember that scattergram, mm -hmm. you have, you know, you will see in that lower quadrant, it's typically a cluster of low funded, uh, low achieving school districts. Now, typically what the trend has been is a movement to the upper right quadrant. But here, I didn't see that. I saw just more money and still not achievement. That what you would benchmark typically is into the lower right with the clarification or qualification or clarification that you have to make sure that, that there's still more apples to apples comparison. So if you have, um, um, you know, a typically um, a fluent neighborhood where kids are coming to school, sometimes even above grade level, you know, because they're in that ready state compared to, you know, a, a community that might have uh, uh, more poverty, you know, not less reading material at home, you know, less of that, those development things going on, then you're talking about more work, you know, and so you could be looking at, you know, so you really always are looking to make kind of an apples to apples comparison. So even though they're either, that's where I'd be looking, I would also be looking to make sure that they're dealing with uh, proportionally the same, you know, uh, level of students regarding their um, preparedness, so to speak. You know, so so it, you know, there's there's more involved here. And Angela just sent us. Uh, you copied us on everything that Tony asked for, Correct. which was like that. Those were your questions. Right. Um, looking at those different school districts and the comparables. Right. So the question would be: Are, are they yet. comparables? Yeah. You know, to the extent that we, you find that 
Yeah, and we were, yeah, Jim and I were discussing that this afternoon, and I, I just had sent some uh, responses to Tony's questions, and and, and for sure, uh, I think Tony, sometime I should have you come in and look at the an analytics. I think you'd really enjoy just looking at it. Just because of the comparisons that you can make, you, you, mm -hmm. you, it's a tool that really enables us to dig down and start, you know, really mm -hmm. exploring, um, um, you know, to, to pers inquire, you know, deeper levels to be able to get information that's already been collected. You know, to help us with that understanding. Right. Well, we're working to towards, you know, some cleaner processes internally to avoid just simply rolling a budget and assuming that you know that person, you know, that that group, that that person managing that budget always gets that amount and to be able to tie down. Like I went through and detailed out, like for the Skyward transition, how much are we spending this year and next year with Alio, with you know, and just going through and. You know, I feel like there's, you know, the main places that we need to still like kind of take apart and dissect that we haven't really done with at a district level. I mean, or just I should say for everyone is just having people really document down what their fixed expenses are like every single year. I, I would only mm -hmm. just add, you know, in, yeah. in terms of that, the majority of your money uh, is in staffing. Correct. Okay. Yes, for uh, sure. And and it's how staffing is used, or again, going back to those positions, mm -hmm. you know, in terms of just really recognizing. And and I think as we just discussed, um, I believe very strongly that part of our problem is not our teachers, as an example, but a curriculum that we have in reading. You know that many schools have adopted. You know that is is. Um, you know, again, some you know part of this equation that you have to understand in terms of you know how do the the pieces that we add together give you the return that you're receiving. True, sure. so. Angela. The the schools that you put in here as comparables, um, mm -hmm. the fun ten and twenty seven spending by objects per pupil. That one were those those are comparables. Those were um, ones that just Tony had mentioned and okay. asked, like, hey, could we compare to what these other, but that was just an example. Like we can we can sort any of those reports by county, by athletic conference, by CESA, and you can just cherry pick districts to compare okay. to as well, which is really, really nice. And you can set sliders to say, I want to look at districts that are above um, let's say you want to look at socioeconomic status uh, with it was similar to ours, but their um, report card score is 80 and above. You can say like, well, what are they doing? Yeah, those would be the outliers that you'd want to be looking at, you know, to mm -hmm. the extent that, um, you know, somebody that is getting a greater return for a similar demographic population. I don't think we're done on peeling the onion right. on it by any means, but like, uh, especially uh, if, maybe two meetings ago we talked about like the, the salaries and benefits is is 80 percent of your budget and then we have like these non-program transactions between open enrollment vouchers and that that kind of stuff that are just kind of set you know we that and that amounts to about 15 million and then you have i think support services were around 6 million and then one like 1. 1.4 or something was the instructional amount when you even look just on that in those larger buckets, you know, there there's not a lot that's you know that's really discretionary in nature because there's a lot of fixed costs even within those support staff and the instructional pieces that are outside of salaries and benefits. So. Sure. Yeah, I'm just trying to you know know when we have the obviously it's a, a big onion we're on peeling here, right? Mm -hmm. There's a lot of different <laughs> yeah. angles we're taking. Um, I just want to make sure as we're mm -hmm. moving forward that we, you know, then I thought Jim brought up a good point, you know, hey, we're probably going to end up spending around the same amount of money, but how do we, how do we know that we're getting the best value out of it, right? And getting the best return on the investment. Well, and that, that's why I remember, you know, the pilot schools, all of this is trying to help us, you know, to understand in, in terms of the models that we're selecting or home growing, you know, versus something that, you know, th there's evidence of success. If you implement, you know, it's trying to in a short period of time learn, you know, quicker. Can we get a money back guarantee? Yeah. So, but but you know that that's right. I mean, um, mm -hmm. you know, there there's there's a lot of work, but it's all doable. I mean, this mm -hmm. is all. It's just really, you know, applying ourselves and looking at uh, 
this, I think it's important. That doesn't mean that there isn't places to cut. I mean, I'm always one for making sure that we're lean, you know, low overhead, meaning, right, you know, less administration and, and more uh, closer to the classroom. Uh, I mean, this mm -hmm. is what I feel, you know, really strongly about. You have to also recognize we're highly influenced by what the government does to us. You know, they keep adding, you know, to, you know, look at this, do this, look at that. We'll give you some money, but then they expect you to continue that and the money goes away. And then all of a sudden you're, you're adding, you know, potentially more and more people, um, you know, because people are, well, sometimes it all happens because when, when we don't like the results, we ask for more. So there is a motion that is on the floor currently. Is there any further discussion surrounding the motion? Seeing that there is no other discussion, uh, all those in favor of approving the uh, preliminary budget uh, for 2022, 2023, signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed? Motion carries. Preliminary budget is approved. And uh, that would conclude our meeting. Uh, do we have a motion to adjourn? Motion to adjourn. Second. We are adjourned. Oh, uh, signify by saying aye. Uh, aye. Take care. Aye. Take care. Aye. Aye. Take care. Aye. Take care. Okay. All right. Ah, only two hours.